Welcome to the Insightful Professor. Today we're doing a tutorial on creating a table space in Oracle Database. The question obviously that comes up is, what is a table space? Well, a table space is something where we're going to kind of bridge the gap between logical and physical. Now, what does that mean? When you insert a row into a database table, the data to represent that row has to be stored somewhere. That is, there has to be some kind of a physical implementation of the table in the database. The data of the table is physically stored in operating system files, known by, to Oracle or by Oracle as data files. To avoid the need for users of the database to have to deal directly with the physical storage, whatever the bits and bytes might be, Oracle uses a structure called a table space. This effectively is a logical structure, and it serves as a bridge between logical and physical, physical being the operating system data file, where the actual data will reside. Now, tables and indexes are going to be directed to a table space and subsequently will then go into the physical data file associated with the table space. This can be done either explicitly or implicitly. We could actually say create this table and put it in this particular table space. Or each user has associated with them a default table space. So if they simply say create table or create index, the physical storage will be allocated from that default table space for the particular user. This avoids the need for users to have to have any concern about the physical implementation. They can simply think in terms of the logical objects of the tables that they're dealing with and the logical objects of the table space into which they want to kind of deposit the table. So in a relational database management system, the logical structures such as tables, views, uh, indexes, they're independent from the physical structures. And because the physical and logical structures are separate, it makes it possible to manage the physical storage of the database without affecting access to the logical structures. This is actually a pretty nice feature of relational database. So what you need to understand here is that a table space must exist before you can create a table because you're going to target that table space to receive, at least logically, the, the table that you're creating. So when a database is created, there are some table spaces that are created for us automatically, but these are intended for use by the database management system itself. So application data should not be stored in the data files of these table spaces. Therefore, we need to create our own table spaces to hold data for our applications. So a table space is defined or created with a special DDL or data definition language statement, and that's called create table space. Here's the syntax. I might take a, a little look at this and try to get an idea of what's going on. First off, the purpose is to define the logical container, that is the table space, and associated with it physical storage, the actual data file. In order to do this, you just can't walk in off the street and say, hey, I'm going to go create a table space, but you have to have a special system privilege called create table space. Most application developers are not going to have this even in a, a test or development environment. So when we log in to perform the operation here for our demonstration, we're going to log in as the user system. And you should recall that system is a special privileged user with database administration authority. So therefore system has this special create table privilege. Now the create table space statement starts off by giving a name to the table space. Again, that's the name of the logical container. The second clause that we see here is data file. And this has the actual file name. And the file name will include the location, the directory or folder information and the path to get to the file, as well as the file name. And in the case of Windows, we'll put a file name dot and a file type or extension. We can then also specify how large the data file will be as being so many kilobytes, megabytes, or gigabytes. 
and that's where we're using the letter k, m, or g after an integer to in indicate the quantity. There's also a special capability of a table space called auto extend, and we'll use that in our example and show you how we can examine some of the characteristics of this. If you say auto extend off, when the data file is created, you have kind of carved in stone the amount of storage. It will not be able to grow automatically. So if you said make this 10 megabytes, and if you fill up the 10 megabytes and exhaust all of that storage, you're, you're out of luck. But by having the auto extend, it is able to add additional storage and do it again and again and again up until we reach some maximum size. So the next size clause here will specify the increment, how much will be added should we need more storage. And the max size specifies the upper limit. How far can we go? What's the maximum size of the file? Now we should note here that we're specifying data file and all of the storage or physical characteristics of the data file as part of the create table space statement. What happens is when we say create this logical container, this table space, Oracle Database will then communicate with the operating system and then go out and create the file by kind of coordinating that request with the operating system and then the storage is allocated. So the file comes into existence at this point. Now, let's go ahead and show you what we're going to do. We're going to run this query here, which will allow us to connect to the, well, this will not allow us, but we will first connect to the database as a DBA. But this query will allow us to find out some characteristics of existing data file. So DBA data files is part of the metadata for Oracle, as part of the system catalog, or what Oracle calls their data dictionary. And in this view, this DBA data files view, we can get the name of each table space and also the name of the operating system file. Now the reason that we're running this will become clear when we go into the database and fire it up. So let's give it a try. I've already connected as the user system and now I'm going to run that query by saying select table space name and then file name from DBA data files. Now, here's the reason, one of the reasons that we run this query. What I want to do is I want to find out the physical location of the existing files and put my new file in that location. So these are all located on the C drive in the folder called Oracle XE app Oracle Oradata XE. The name of the actual operating system file for the users table space is users dbf. This is the other thing I was looking to find by running the query. What is the file type or the extension for the actual file? So where will it be located and what's the extension? The reason I did this is I'm going to create a new file and a new table space and I want it to kind of be synchronized. I want to put it in the same location and have it adhere to this naming convention. So that's the first step. The second step is let's go ahead and create the actual table space and data file. I'm going to call the table space app data. And we're going to specify the name of the data file to be consistent with what we saw previously. So we're going to say create table space app data, data file, and then notice we have the single quotes or apostrophes to enclose the name of the operating system file. And again, I'm following the convention that I just found of where the current files are located, and I'm calling this app data because that seems appropriate for this table space and using that extension of .dbf. I'm going to have Oracle in that allocate an initial 50 megabytes, enable auto extend, so if we fill up the 50, it will automatically add another segment or extension here of 10 meg, and it will do that again and again until we've reached this upper limit that I've specified of 100 meg. So let's go into the database and see if we can get this guy created. Okay, so we start off by saying create table space. As I said, I'm going to call it app data, and I'm going to specify a data file that follows the naming convention here. So I'm going to cheat a little bit 
and grab all of this, the drive and the directory names, and I'm going to pop that in and paste it here, and then I'm going to say appdata.dbf. Okay, so that'll be the name of my file, and it will be sitting next to these other guys, the same location. And additionally, I want to say the size is 50M or 50 meg, and I want to say auto extend will be on, and the next chunk of storage to be allocated if needed will be 10 megabytes in size, and we'll go up to a maximum size of 100 meg. So there's the statement, which should agree with what we saw on the screen a moment ago. Let's go ahead and fire this up. And fairly quickly, Oracle added, allocated the 50 meg. It also updated metadata. It updated information that it had in the system catalog or data dictionary about data files, about table spaces, about storage. All of that's been updated. So it's more than just completing this and creating the file. It's updating all of that information that Oracle has about all of these components. So we got this created. Now, let's go back to the slide and see what I have planned next. Well, we created the table space. What I want to do is look at some of that updated metadata. I'm going to run this query, which again is targeting DBA data files. But this time I'm doing more than getting the file name and table space. I'm getting some information about the storage, how many blocks, which are database blocks, and bytes, and also the status of this. So let's fire this guy up and see what we can find. And we're going to say select file name. And we should hopefully see what we typed in here under create table space. And then I'm going to uh, also select the table space name. And we should see, in addition to the other four that came up, information now that says, hey, app data is out there. And then we'll also get information about the storage that I said we would get, the number of blocks, the number of bytes, and also the status, whether the table space is currently available and the data file is available. So this is targeting, once again, DB, DBA data files. And when we run it, previously we got four rows. We now have five rows. Here is the information about the new table space and data file that we just created. The name of the table space is app data, which is what we had requested. The name of the file is this app data DBF in this location, which is now right next to the other ones. And that's exactly what we had specified. And now the blocks, there are 6,400 database blocks. And that translates to this many bytes. Now we had allocated 50 meg, and sure enough, that's what it looks like we have somewhere in that ballpark. Okay, so 50 megabytes of disk space was allocated. Now, the next thing we want to do is take a peek at something else. Let's look at some additional metadata here. DBA data files contains quite a bit of other stuff. So I'm going to select file name, and we'll go with table space name once again. But this time, I'm going to verify that the table spaces data file is auto, auto extend enabled. So is it auto extensible? So we select this from DBA data files, and what we find is it turns out everyone is auto extend uh, enabled. But what we're really concerned with is the app data. And yes, it was set that way. Now, what happened here is kind of curious that because the column contains character data and it's only a maximum of three characters wide, you can see that the column heading is much longer than that. The column heading got truncated. That, that's not a big deal. So anyway, if you're curious why it got cut off there, that's the reason. This particular tool uh, is not the friendliest tool for running queries. It gets the job done. Later on, we'll look at a better tool that's going to be friendlier and easier to work with. Now, one other thing we can do is run another query against uh, DBA data files. And we'll get, again, the file name and table space name. But we'll also check out that increment. This is stored in an increment by column. And we'll check out the max bytes 
that are permitted. And when we fire this up, again, we'll examine app data. And we see that uh, it will be incremented by 1,280 database blocks. And that will be, as you can see here, a maximum of about 100 meg, which is what we had specified. So at this point, we've created a new table space and associated uh, the data file in the database. So tables and indexes could now be create, cr uh, created here. Let's go back to the slide and see if we have anything else to offer you. Well, here's the query that I just ran about auto extend. And again, this was just querying the same data dictionary view, but getting some different data out of there, whether it was auto extensible. And likewise for the physical storage, say increments and capacity, the max bytes. So those are the two queries that we just ran. So with that, we pretty much covered uh, everything we wanted to talk about in uh, creating a table space here. So at this point, the table space is ready to be used. And if you'd like to try this on your own system, I'm going to post the SQL statements that I've used here, uh, both the create table space and all of the select statements to query the metadata in a file named creating a table space on our related website, which is www.timhartley.com. So simply go to the website, locate a link that says insightful professor in the menu, and then click on that and you'll see the files that have been posted and are available for you. And what you'll be looking for for this tutorial is creating a table space. So you'll then, after doing this, if you follow all of these steps yourself, want to check out the tutorial on creating a database user to see how we can set the table space that we just created as the default container for that user's tables. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. If you have any questions or comments, just let us know and we'll, we'll respond. And thanks for watching.